creating and configuring SSIS packages. So in this micro nugget, I want to get you familiar with the main object in SSIS that we'll be working with. This is our deployable unit, a package. And a package is really just a container for a bunch of tasks. A bunch of tasks that all work together to do something like a process. And a good example of an SSIS package would be to import a file from a remote location. So we could set up a task that says, hey, use an FTP task to go get a file and download it here locally so I can then open the file, read the data, and import it into a SQL Server database. There's a lot of steps that go on there. All of those are different tasks that all need to work together. So the end result is going to be this package with a bunch of tasks that all connect together. And it's, it's, it's a lot like building an interactive flowchart. So the goal of this micro nugget is to get you familiar with SSIS projects, packages, the package designer, and where you can find and work with all these major components, the things like tasks and connections and events and parameters and variables. So let's get down to business. Now, if we want to build SSIS packages, we need to launch SQL Server Data Tools, which used to be called SQL Server Business Intelligence Development Studio, otherwise known as Biz, and you can see why. <laughs> so you can find this in your start menu in the programs directory under your SQL Server 2012 installation. So I have the evaluation version of SQL Server installed. And here you can see SQL Server data tools. So you can launch this. I actually already have it launched right down here in the taskbar. That way you don't have to watch it load. And uh, I also added a project in here called micronuggets.ssis. This is just an empty project. You can actually create a brand new project by clicking on new project and then hitting up integration services project. You give it a name, hit OK, and you're on your way. And what you'll end up with is something that looks exactly like this. So we have a project. Inside of here we have a package. If we open up our package, it'll take us into the designer. So a quick tour of the package designer here. This is where we're going to be setting up our flows and configuring our tasks. And really, the main places we're going to be working with here is the control flow and the data flow. You're going to flip between these two depending on what you're doing. If you're doing both you know, data-related and administrative stuff or process stuff or moving files around, they're going to be in both of these heavily. If you don't do anything with data, you're probably just going to be sitting in the control flow. Uh, but most of the time, you'll be flipping between these two. And the control flow is really, think of it as the entry point. So when this package executes, the first thing, the first area it's going to look in is the control flow area and start with the first task and then work its way down the, the flow. And so these are our tasks inside of our toolbox over here. And you could do things like execute a SQL task. We could execute a SQL task, and then when it's done, we could send an email. See that? And then these, and we can drag lines between them. So if we were to execute this, assuming we had you know, things underneath here, maybe we were going to execute a SQL task and then send a mail to somebody to let them know, hey, your task is complete. This is how we would do it. We would just need to double-click on each of these tasks, configure some properties. We're on our way. So for the SQL task, we'd have to point to a connection to a valid SQL server to execute the task on. And you can see that in the package properties here. Here's the connection. Here's our SQL statement. Pretty simple. And then the send mail task, pretty much the same thing. You just have to set up a mail connection and then set up your, you know, what your parameters would be for mail. So your connection managers are down here. This is where you're going to set up your connections. And what I want to show you how to, what to do here, and I'm just going to delete these by highlighting and hit delete on my keyboard, is I want to get a data flow task going. I want to show you how we can take data out of SQL Server, out of a table, export it to a flat file, and, and create that file on the fly and put it on the file system. So I drag a data flow task. So here's the thing. If we flip over to data flow task, it's going to take us right into that task. And if we have multiple data flow tasks, you'll be able to choose which one you're working with, which is always a good idea uh, to name them. So for instance, let's just call this, how about our employee export. So you could either double click on this task to take us into that data flow tab, or you can just hit the data flow tab and it'll take us in. In this case, we only have one, so it's going to take us right into it. But you can see we have a whole new set of tasks to work with that are related to data. So when working with data, especially imports and exports, you're going to have sources and destinations. So if we scroll down here, we have source tasks and destination tasks. So what we're going to do again here is take data out of SQL Server. And if I flip over here, I have SQL Server Management Studio opened up. We have a database on the local install here, uh, our local machine, .NET Nugget SQL 2012 SQL instance. I have a database called SSI Import with a table called Employees. And if I grab everything out of this Employees table and hit Execute, there we go. We have uh, just a few records in here, a couple of employee records, that we're going to take this data and put it into a flat file. So let's minimize Management Studio. Let's head back over here to our package designer. And I'm just going to drag an OLADB source task onto the designer. Now to configure this, we can double click on it. And now we need to set up a connection manager. 
So you can also do this, uh, since we're already in the task, we'll just do it on the fly here by clicking the new button, but you can also right click on the tray down here to configure your connections. So you can kind of do them all in one shot down there. But we're already in the task, so let's just hit new. We'll hit new again here. And now let's just say .NET Nugget backslash SQL 2012, our local instance, we'll use Windows Authentication, and then we can just drop this down and choose the database. There it is, SSIS Import, we'll hit OK, hit OK again. And now we can choose what data out of this database we want to work with and send to that flat file. So here's your data access mode. You can just specify a table. You can specify a table or view based on a variable. You can do a SQL command or a SQL command based on a variable. So a table or view is very easy because it's just going to scan all the tables and views that you have in that database. SQL command, if you have a pre-built query, you know, something that's a mile long that joins many tables together, then you can just paste it right in here. And, uh, and when you do so, and you hit columns, it'll actually grab all of the columns here uh, for this connection. So if we hit OK, it's configured. Now we need a destination. So let's take our flat file destination and kind of do the same thing. We're just going to drag this together here because what this will do is by dragging this to this connection, the flat file is, is going to know the schema for where the data is coming from and it's going to be able to auto configure a lot of properties for us. So if we double click on our flat file destination, we need to do the same thing. We need to configure a destination. We're going to say the format's going to be delimited. We'll hit OK. And now we can just start specifying things like a name. We'll just call this our employees.txt. That way it'll show it up like this, show up like this down in the designer. In our connection manager tray, you'll see here in a second. But we also need to specify where this file is going. So let's hit browse. We're going to put this just in the directory here of our project. We'll call this employees.txt. We'll hit open. And now we can say, yeah, sure, why not? We'll take the column names in the first data row. You can specify some other things in here. You can even look at the columns. Here are all the columns. Here's, if you want to change the delimiter from a comma to something like a pipe, a vertical bar, semicolon, whatever you want there, we'll leave it as comma delimited data. Pretty popular choice. You can even see all of the data types for each column. Since uh, th and, th and this is where dragging that line from our source to our destination helped because it read the schema, inferred it, and use the uh, use the exact na the names the data types the lengths everything so that's a really nice way to to auto configure all this stuff and you can even preview the data here if you'd like to now this is previewing the file and there's nothing in the file that's why you're not seeing anything but if we hit okay here we hit mappings don't forget to hit mappings otherwise nothing will be mapped and, and it auto mapped for us because the names are the same if it didn't auto mapped you can just drag from one to the other and it'll map them or you can also choose them out of the list here that's all there is to it and you can see our connection managers are down here appropriately named. If we hit our control flow and we hit execute, here's how you execute it, by the way. It's going to try to run this first task, which since this task is a data flow task, it's going to go in and run the other tasks as well. You can see we've got a green check mark there. And if we go into here, we've got more check marks and it even shows us that three rows were piped from our source to our destination. So now we can hit stop. And if we just go into that directory, I'm just going to paste in the path here. Here it is. And there is employees.txt. If we open it up, there it is. So the first row has our column names as we specified. The rest are all data. Columns are comma delimited. That's all there is to it. So you can see SSIS is fun. It's easy to use. It's cool to use. And by the way, here's where you can also manage parameters and your event handlers. This is your package explorer, which just shows you all of the different uh, tasks and components here inside of your package. One kind of nice uh, big hierarchical view of everything and then you can also see your execution results and the progress of the previous execution. So in this micro nugget we got familiar with creating and configuring SSIS packages. I hope this has been informative for you and I thank you for viewing.